welcome to episode 29 of Enterprise Tech India Plus. And uh, we are happy that you're here and you are subscribing to our channel and uh, listening to our podcast in audio and uh, seeing our videos. Please do give us your feedback. And uh, if you want to participate, reach out, reach out, reach out to us on uh, Facebook, on LinkedIn, or just uh, check out our website and reach out to us. So we'll be happy to welcome you onto the show and uh, have uh, conversations with you. So today we have uh, our favorite guest, Anand uh, Anand Kumaran. Uh, short, short for Kumaran, we just call him Kumaran, and he's a he's a chief CEO and uh, mentor, chief mentor for. Tiny Magic, and uh, we have Ram from Virtuosa, uh, we have Venkat from Macwork Connect, and we have Nishan from ID Software. So today, the topic which we have uh, decided to talk about is project management. Project management has been around for uh, for, a, for as long as IT has existed. As long as people have built things, uh, there has been project management. Sometimes formal, sometimes informal, right? And, and there have been so many frameworks for doing project management, right? And, and, and every time you, uh, the first application which, which anybody writes today is a to-do application, which is another kind of a project management, right? So, so this, is, this is what I wanted to uh, throw it out there with all of you is, what, what, do, you, what do you think is, is happened over the so many years uh, in, in IT specifically? That project management is it is it improved is it changed is agile really making a big difference now is the project management really changed that much has actually in some ways agile disrupted that whole uh, approach of uh, project management which was linear in nature right now you want iterative everything needs to be iterative now so Kumar what, what, what do you think about the whole project management piece in, in IT, IT uh, development, IT implementations, right? So, uh, so whenever you do this thing, what do you think about it? When you need to start doing something, what do you think about how the project will turn out? Is it, is it by default you think that this has to be always agile? See, I think uh, what is project? You got to get, I think if you get down to the basics, right? Uh, the PMI definition of that, right? I might be outdated, outdated here, or I, I was trying just trying to get if they have, if they have a new definition or it's the same. If it's the different, then I would be happy to be corrected. But from what I last I remember, a definition of a project is something which has a clear start and an end. Technical definition as per PMI, right? That concept is not valid anymore. So nothing, nothing ends anymore. Yeah, so there are no projects to be done, literally. Because there's no project in the real world. Everything is an evaluation. Everything is a work in progress. So the, I'm at a loss. Project doesn't exist. Now you want me to talk about project <laughs> management. <laughs> okay, so, so I, let, us I don't know. let us start there. <laughs> Let us okay. start there. How, just, how hold mine, just hold mine. Just hold mine. I don't want to bias the whole discussion. I'm just telling honestly where I'm stuck with. Let's just listen to others and then you'll come back to me. Uh, okay. Go ahead, Rob. Why, why, don't you, why don't you share how, how you have seen uh, over your career project management has changed? Yeah. So over a period of time, there has been uh, quite a lot of change in the way we do the project management. And recently, the keyword is agile uh, delivery setup, right? So uh, most of the enterprise, um, you know, firms are moving towards agile now, right? And they are uh, forcing, you know, the team members to adopt to uh, agile way of, uh, you know, delivery system. And uh, now we have uh, engagement with, uh, you know, Agile coach. This is some new term that is coming in the, you know, recent world, uh, you know, uh, uh, delivery um, uh, world where we are hearing about Agile coach being part of the delivery team, right? So they come for a brief period. They uh, make people understand what Agile is. Uh, that it is not a process or it is not any tool, collection of tools. It is just a 
matter of values and principles right so and uh, you know the main success i see uh, towards this adoption towards agile is it uh, decentralizes the decision making uh, you know uh, system okay so it empowers again it comes back to empowerment right so it gives every team member okay uh, a chance to express themselves okay in the squad calls or whatever so uh, new terms are coming into picture new me uh, methodologies are coming into picture again the methodology is totally flexible there is no hard and fast rule for uh, implementing the agile principles a uh, methodology or collection of tools that is relevant for one um, you know team uh, which is developing a specific product may not be relevant for the other guy okay so all they are looking for is to meet the uh, you know the principles okay of agile and they don't really care about the way you implement it or the way you uh, provide that value to the business right so that becomes uh, you know more uh, makes it more successful because there is no rigidity there okay you have to follow certain certain uh, such and such process you have to make use of certain tools which are popular in the market so even without any tool without anything i can still go ahead with uh, you know agile development and delivery right so all you have to do is you have to have an understanding and you have to change the perception there has been so much of challenges uh, you know when we adopted to this agile way of uh, delivery uh, from typical waterfall and there has been resistance from both delivery as well as from um, you know the business team of the end users right because now we are seeking the participation of business users uh, to a greater extent compared to the previous uh, uh, you know methodology so they see it as a burden to start with okay why should i come and participate in this daily stand up call or squad calls uh, you know why should i be even caring about it but again at the end point it is going to empower them okay directly over a period of time again there is a transition period where everyone uh, you know sees it as a you know bottleneck you know they are adopted to certain way of delivering systems and they are happy with it now there is a new thing coming into picture and it requires time to you know get adopted so obviously uh, you know initially when things were given as an option they were resisting it but now after seeing various uh, you know benefits the firm itself is trying to enforce you know people towards adoption and they have some kind of uh, timelines okay you have to get adopted to this agile way of, and we will give everything whatever you need you need agile coach we will give okay you need some extra time in terms of understanding you need some learning there is a boot camp okay agile boot camp where and they give some necessary training uh, you know towards adoption of uh, this thing and uh, they are making it uh, you know more convenient and comfortable for both business as well as development team uh, and the transition is uh, you know going smooth uh, you know in the recent past that's what i see so transition is definitely uh, necessary because uh, from agile perspective you know things are more flexible and it gives more benefit if you truly understand what agile is okay so there is various versions of agile okay none of them uh, we can say it is wrong or right right so but you should understand the essence of agile and once you are uh, clear with that uh, adopting to agile development or delivery uh, setup is uh, much more comfortable and beneficial to So, so just just to uh, uh, ask uh, some of the challenges which you mentioned is that just adjustment challenge but in terms of in terms of uh, the actual delivery of uh, a product has that really improved with agile in your experience or the previous linear waterfall method used to uh, deliver better results uh definitely it is helping because uh ultimately it comes to human interaction okay so one of the pillars is uh, human dynamics right and even in our architecture a uh, five pillar setup so here uh, when you go towards uh, more interaction okay between the stakeholders involved 
eventually it is going to help us out in uh, you know better delivery right so that kind of closeness or togetherness okay or uh, as i told you we are decentralizing the decision making power right everyone has a say in, so even a new person or a new joiny okay coming fresh out of college is capable of giving a demo okay now we are uh, developing certain thing and agile insist on uh, frequent demos you know to get the customer feedback and for giving such kind of demos we are engaging the you know fresh uh, freshers okay so we do all the hard work okay they understand what this particular uh, you know system is doing and they are capable of giving a demo all they need is proper language okay to communicate what they have developed so as long as they are able to do that we are empowering a, even a new journey okay uh, entry level trainee uh, to participate and uh, that demo is going to reach the direct end client okay so they have the satisfaction that uh, they are able to reach out to uh, you know the uh, end client which never has been the case before okay for them to talk to business they have to go through at least 3 to 4 years of uh, you know uh, experience within the development team itself then only they will be given an opportunity and there again there will be uh, the delivery team will be scared okay if we make him talk to the business uh, what if he messes up certain things okay but now that when we are talking more with the business directly in these kind of squad calls we come to understand that they are listening they are willing to listen okay even if you are doing some mistakes here and there they say it's okay it's perfectly fine we understand that you do mistakes and uh, we will we are here to correct your business understanding if it is if you are going wrong somewhere so that kind of uh, you know that uh, brotherhood okay that kind of close relationship is uh, the key success factor here so obviously that specific thing okay the empowerment for even a new joiny and uh, you know the ability for the business team to come down and talk to even this new guy who is coming into the team so that kind of cultural change is the main success i see again again everything comes back to the culture as long as you are able to hit that point uh, you will definitely uh, you're going to make changes huge changes ஒர்க்கிங் so yeah as um, i i totally agree with you ram so here instead of uh, see even i could say my perspective and uh, uh, here um, in our company instead of managing the project actually we are managing the resources right like in the in, in the sense we are uh, as uh, he has um, uh, rightly mentioned the word empowering we are making every team members take their own responsibilities actually we are not giving the direct task okay take this task complete this time and come, come back with the output instead of that we are giving the options these are the like features which one you need to take how much time you you take the responsibilities right we are giving the responsibilities to the team member so that uh, he will also know uh, uh, he does not feel someone is forcing you he says that okay he, he takes the responsibility he has to complete because he has committed it right the same way the culture is changing we are not imposing and um, so uh, th- that is the positive thing i could say uh, so it is also helpful for the uh, the um, the um, as uh, as he has mentioned right now he has opportunities to give the demo to the client directly when he has um, he has worked on project like uh, like previously it's not uh, it, it never been the case previously because uh, uh, no one even claimed don't know uh, who are the persons who worked on the project right so here uh, we are giving the giving the satisfaction of 
uh, working the such environment. And same way, uh, same way, and, and it is also not only that, and for a, for a uh, like um, manager, previously, uh, see that, uh, I'll tell you one of my example. See, um, when we are developing the project, previously what had happened is, I'll give the timeline and, and for the two months to develop such a project. And we will be developing it and on and, and the 30th day, only someone will know that whether okay it is uh when it is done or not like uh, i'll be saying it is done it is done two percent three percent remaining four percent remaining at the, at the 30th day he has to wait and see the whole output because uh, we haven't um uh, we haven't attached like uh, followed the agile methodology like we have been using the waterfall method where uh, the output will be coming in the last. So here, it is not the case. Here, will be uh, every week, he has to give the release, we have to show the some output so that he, uh, that, uh, he also knows that, okay, something is uh, going in the right path, right? So the same, it has got two, two benefit. One is we can see the uh, progress um, in the now and then, and the responsibility is over to the the uh, like developer uh, like he, na, na, not much pressure in the uh, like management so that's a good point um, mm -hmm. uh, the empowerment uh, should should actually help uh, with the with the quality output so Nishant, the question to you is what happens to all the deadlines which the customers throw at you because now we are saying we will tell you, we we'll just, resource, this is the whole agile uh, uh, and, and methodology is the resources and the time is, a, is, is boxed, right? It's only the outcome which can change, right? Now, if the outcome is so variable, how can we commit anything to the customer? If, if, it is, if we are saying uh, you have full authority to change the schedule, change whatever time you need to do, you need to do something. So now, it appears, I'm just saying, that I'm being devil's advocate here, I'm just, it appears that customers have no control over the timeline anymore. What do you think, Nishan? Yeah, in uh, in our case also, actually, when we changed from this waterfall to Agile, one of the exercises actually that was uh, that was executed toward the organization is to, we should first inform this organization level change to the customer also, because they should also understand the fundamentals of agile uh, then only we can at least as you said we can say like when this timeline is the page or this because we should manage with this thing we uh, customer also should have an understanding like this is what agile is about like uh, and we should uh, 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 but the thing is even though we say like from a product based company which is or uh, we when we have this customer commitment or when we publish the roadmap to customer like these all uh, R&D functions will be available by uh, the next year or in the next 12 months or the next six months the customer would definitely expect and they would have the subsequent plan like after this functionality is ready they would have to uh, do some other their own some other plans to uh, which is aligned to our roadmap items or which is aligned to our R&D but now, when we change to Agile, actually, we are facing a, in fact, actually, we are facing a challenge to meet the timeline because uh, we have to manage, we have to deal with big R&Ds and that too with the specific number of resources and the, uh, the sprint timeline or the, uh, either it can be weekly sprint or it can be a two week sprint or whatever be the things we have to align with these things and we are facing a huge challenge there and coming back to this project management actually i just first i would like to and uh, just i am actually trying to think what uh, kuman said like when we say like a project is project should have a certain end i i am trying to link it with how we can say uh, how we can define a project like so I'm not sure whether I, I'm uh, what I'm saying or what I, the analogy that I'm saying is right. This project actually, when we say uh, the project should have a start and end in the IT or in the software development things, the scope and the time can be considered or it, it is actually linked, can be defined as a project. Like uh, when 
we say like these all are the functions or these all are the functions included in this scope and this is the time by which we will release this function so that period defines a project and we should have a manager to manage that project. that is a project manager but in the agile world we are saying like there should not there, there won't be any designated project manager role who is who will be managing this project instead a scrum team or a squad will uh, manage the entire thing uh, and each and every person in that squad has the role to do the uh, project management which means that is decentralized means each and every person doing project management but that has uh, both pros and cons like when we say like a project management actually it's a project management is a very matured role i, I would say it is a very matured role just uh, even though we say like each and every litmus member or a fresher in the team also can do the project management that is its own pitfalls like uh, uh, especially when it comes to the resource management kind of things resource management kind of things we need that much maturity to manage the resource so uh, the agile the project management kind has some limitation i would say like but from a company point of view actually rather assigning a project manager with that cost to manage the entire project actually they are trying to contain all these things along with this considering this project manager as a side role now because this the team has to that particular scrum team or the squad who is actually responsible for delivering an item should the project management as a side role and each and every person in that squad should uh, do the project manager role that's the scenario happening in the agile world that's what uh, my observation on that so kumar back to you <laughs> after you've heard you've heard uh, all uh, all those different perspectives of the good things the bad things uh, do you think project management is really dead or it is just agile is just you're doing huge number of projects in one week increments so instead of just having this one big six month project you just do every two weeks you'll do one small project so is it is it the same thing and yeah, like think, Tishan said, it is decentralized project management. See, I think uh, again, it is like uh, project management will never die. Okay, just like uh, let's say uh, with citizenship developers, will all developers die, and will IT systems, IT comp, IT things will go away? No, it won't, right? But the charter and other things would have changed. Okay, and I think. Uh, definitely to do something, we need a scope. We need a budget. This needs to be understood. Without that, you cannot do something. Okay. But what I would say is, a projects have become MVPs. Now, at Tiny Magic, I would say any MVP beyond two weeks is doesn't make sense. Okay. You can have a broad idea. I think the Agile world kind of talks to that. We have epics user stories mvps like that yes okay now you need someone to kind of say what are the epics we are going to deal with but epics don't have a end line it doesn't have a end date to it they have a broad thing quarter one quarter two quarter three like that okay but user stories and mvps do and the shorter these things becomes it's impossible for a project manager to manage that cannot get down to the details. So it kind of forces you to say that squad leader is the person who has to do it and they have to take the decision by themselves. The scrum coach or the scrum manager enables them to take that decision. So in that way, if you say, can a fresher be a project manager? Yes, he has to be. We have to reach that level. If a person cannot manage his own work for two weeks, what am I going to do? Do I have the time to do it? If that person cannot answer, what is the work that we are doing? I'm trying to take a car and go from here to, let's say, Delhi. right? If I don't know the direction, if I don't know how much fuel it will take, if I don't know to drive car, why is the why am I sitting in the driver's seat? I should not be. Right? So if a team of two developers and one lead is going to say, I'm going to finish this module in two weeks. They better know why and how they will finish it. Now, do they have the experience to do it for six months? No, they don't. But if you take two weeks, 
if they don't have the capability to estimate time and effort for two weeks, they are not fit to do that work. They just don't know what they are doing. You don't need a project manager to do that. So you're saying okay, that so, the productivity actually has increased with, with, with doing doing what we are doing at a smaller uh, increments. The predictability has actually become better instead of uh, because six months. Okay. The claim is it will become better. Okay. Okay. So when you okay. say we're moving away from project management and going to this, this has to happen. Then only that predictability will come. Now, is project management predictability is an increased? The amount of projects which has failed is significantly more than projects which are successful in the IT. Right. All the four decades put together, 80% right. of the projects fail. Right. Now, what does it mean? When the project started, there was a time and budget agreed, right? right. That should not have changed. Right. That is the qualifying criteria. That is the success. The scope agreed, budget agreed, it was met to users experience. 80% of the projects fail. So project management by itself has proved itself, like how successful it is. Okay. Okay. So okay. to me, project management is grossly failed the industry. Okay. Especially the IT industry, you would say. The IT industry. Now we are still even managing. Even in general also, means if you have to look at, look at road building projects. None well, road, road building projects, of course, yeah, we can right. see that, right? right? We have bridges standing here, bridges falling down, half completed. There are very few things which is done. Let's take our house. Did you, did any of you who have bought a house finish your project and budget? <laughs> Absolutely. You said two lakhs and you did it. I will take a bet. All of you have increased at least by 35, 40%. You have gone above your budget. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. So that's evidently it stands. Like what have you even argued on? Project management has failed because it didn't deal with reality. It didn't deal with the reality that we cannot predict things beyond six months. Forget six months, beyond one month, human mind doesn't have the capability to predict stuff. And we are trying to play God. Okay. 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 Have yeah. a long-term plan, have an intention. I think key thing which Ram talks about and in hyper we talk about is be very clear about what the intention is. Right. And come out with a broad epic, but commit to two weeks and hit it. If you didn't hit it, find out what the mistakes is, fix it. So get predictability at a two week level. Now, once you're able to predict what you can do at a two weeks, over a period of time, if I have a six month project, will I fix it in six months? Yes, I will. If not, at least in 10, 20% deviation, I will fix it. And you, you won't be wasting uh, so many people's time, if it has to fail, it can fail earlier than six months. You so I would say we should move from project management to managing release, release management. And it's not just software release. It is releasing of a capability which will solve a end user's problem, right. which is what agile towards. So I will manage the release. I will manage meeting expectation. And in fact, the word management itself is not satisfying to me. I mean, like I will screw up and then I will manage the disappointment. <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's about, I should say it is about um, delivering on commitment. I think the word should be delivering on commitment. Right? And I will get better at it. I delivered 50%. I delivered, initially I delivered 0%, which is what we are today. Right. So from there, I will go to 10, 20, 30, and that will be my endeavor, right? And I don't think as humans, we will ever be able to say 100% commitment delivered. I would love to meet somebody or some team which has been able to do that. I definitely want to learn from that. I think that's where we should be. I think this management itself is fundamentally, I disagree. I think it's opinion. I think it has to be delivering on commitment. Commit something, deliver it. If you can't commit for a month, commit for a week. If you can't commit for a week, commit for one day. And then say, by end of today, I will finish a document with one page. Right. Send it to the customer. Meet right. the commitment. So I think I think we, we, we reached the conclusion of this discussion, which is the, the traditional project <coughs> management obviously has failed. And, and this goes by the 
data available on the number of failed projects, right? So this is this is a given now. We, this is this is proven beyond doubt. And uh, for some reason, we continue to do projects in that way in some re some areas. We continue to build roads that way. I guess we need to see how agile can go to road building, but I'm not sure that but that will happen anytime soon. But I think there's a, there's a key message here that we, our predictability for a long term is 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 basically non-existent. So we we should target in shorter iterations. That is what agile and Scrum are trying to do, right? And obviously, it takes time and and Ram and Venkat and Vishal all of them have, have expressed various challenges with going with this approach because people are not used to this approach. It is a learning curve. There is there is uh, uh, adjustment both at the customer level and at the at the uh, people who are executing the uh, the implementation level. So so there there are challenges, but it seems like at present it seems like that that is the that is the most uh, uh, closer to delivering on commitments we can come to that if we can do shorter duration commitments, even though we can. So this is where the fail fast. Uh, uh, let uh, me put it this way, no? Yes. Run a project for two weeks and hit it. Right. So do project management. Okay, yeah. fine. I will come to your path. Okay, do project management. Okay, do it. Do okay. a project for two weeks, but make sure hundred percent you will hit it on two weeks. Yes. Yes. That's that's. Then I think see. That's Whatever method, you want to call it project, call it a project. I have no problem. You want to call it project management, please go ahead and call it. I'm not objecting. But can you hit a project in two weeks and deliver it? Yeah. And the end customer, not the project manager will say, good job. No, no, no. The end customer will say, I am happy with what you have given. Okay. And, and I think regarding that MVP kind of a thing, I think it's kind of interesting. There was one case where a brain surgery for a kid had to be done, right? I think some, I think one or two people would have taken that quiz, which I had put. Is it possible to do an MVP for a brain surgery for a child? At the outset, it seems no. How can you do an MVP half cut and then leave it? Is it? No, you cannot, right? It has to be done like a waterfall. Okay. But with digital technologies today, there are things that's possible. What's actually done is they took MRI scans of the brain using 3D printers. They made the exact replica of the kid's brain. And the doctors could operate on that brain, not once, twice, but multiple times till they were comfortable with going into that brain and get done that operation and get out. So they know exactly where to make that cut. What is the contour of that brain that will be there? What is the thing that... They will do all that. They actually did three MVPs before cutting open that kid. Interesting. This is where digital technologies come in. We need to be using that well. Now, if it can be done for a brain surgery, if somebody says, you know, I am running a big project, I don't know how to break that up. That means we don't know how to break it up. Somebody has to convince me hard to say, no, this can be done only in six months. Before that, nothing can be done in production. I need to personally, I would wish somebody challenges me to say this cannot be broken down. Nothing can go to production in less than six months. I don't believe that there's something like that. Somebody has to come up with some evidence. Right. So I, I think that's a, that's a very good thought to end on. We need, we need to rethink our assumptions about how projects can be actually delivered and, and that whole uh, which is a proven failure approach we should not stick with it uh, until See, and, let, we, yeah. and let me also put something out there i have been so far i have had only 10 percent success in meeting the two week commitment out of in the five five years of tiny magic my success rate is around 10 to 15% for a two week commitment. That's all. Out of all these years, I as a technology team, only 15% of that, I still haven't crossed the 20% mark of a project management, even for a two week delivery. Okay, but then 
if i can't meet a two week delivery there's no way i'm going to meet a six month or a six year delivery it's going to become wider and wider beyond that Okay, so I think I, this this debate will continue for some time. This debate correct. will continue, and, and so new... it's not a switch is possible. Yeah. But what I would say is, the commitment to delivering on time and budget should not be compromised, and consciously acknowledging, I didn't meet your commitment. I screwed up, and that's one of the things about agile: calling out a failure very clearly. not glossing over it not telling the requirement was not clear no nothing i failed end of story it's a digital answer did i deliver did i didn't was it successful was it failure that's it there's no change request to an mvp i think in short i am telling it should take responsibility for the screw ups i didn't deliver i didn't deliver sorry i messed up let me try to do better next time that's all no excuses That's, that's that's the one thing which is humanly difficult to uh, change in a culture, <laughs> right? Which is which is accepting responsibility. It is always somebody else's fault, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I, I I thank everyone of you to to this discussion, and I, I know this is uh, sometimes can be a passionate topic to discuss, right? So what is the real value of agile? What is the real value? <laughs> what we have been trying to do. uh for so long and and when even when when agile projects also fail it's not like agile project projects always succeed so i think we need to keep on uh, like in agile world keep on iterating till we become better at doing it or until we find out some different method which which is not yet agile so so uh for the moment i guess agile is the way to go uh project management is dead long live project management so uh Uh, thank you for all your time, and uh, hope uh, our listeners and viewers find this interesting to uh, give their input. Please share your input on our LinkedIn page, Facebook page. We'll be happy to listen to you. What you think about project management? Is agile working for you? And we have had this topic about uh, agile uh, quite a few times, but now we are talking from a different perspective. Please share your perspective. Thank you, and uh, see you next time.